Hey everybody, I'm Mike Peters. And I'm Rebecca Farina. And you're watching LIE. Coming up, we'll have a look at a local fundraiser. The Gold Coast Art Center had a brand new exhibit opening. Plus, a new Did You Know with Carleen Lavelle. All that and more on, on LIE. LIE. Hey everybody. everybody, welcome back, happy June, happy summer. Yes, finally. Yeah, you know, and I know a lot of you out there are trying to get into summer shape, and there's actually a fun way for people to get in summer shape and support a good cause. And Carlene Lavelle is there to show you what it was all about. Let's take a look. Thanks for checking in. Guess what I'm doing today? I'm going to sweat, sun, and sip, and in that order. Today I'm here with the Fountain of Kindness, a local nonprofit organization started by a Great Neck resident who is determined to spread kindness through acts of community service and local activities. So get ready for me to bust the sweat, bust the move, sip and brunch, and talk to the founders. I'll see you soon. How did you get started? So we started the organization. It actually started out with one child, and from there there was a huge outpouring, outpouring from the whole community, and everyone wanted to get involved. So we just took it and ran with it and started the nonprofit. And you are a Great Neck resident, and your organization is as well. Do you have to live in Great Neck to participate? No, you don't have to live in Great Neck to participate. Um, we service all of New York area, so everyone is able to join in and come help and spread the kindness. And so far, you, you established yourself in 2017, but you guys have done a lot already. Can you tell our viewers what have you done for the community? Sure, so um, we've had a lot of kids who have, um, have been diagnosed with cancer or they've had long hospital stays, and we've been there. We've been able to provide them with meals. We've been able to surprise them with gift baskets. Um, we've been able to send volunteers just to spend time with them, give their family a little bit of a break. Um, and we've even helped the elderly who are in rehab centers, old age homes. We've taken some goodies to cheer them up and spread the kindness to them. Um, and hopefully this year will be even bigger and bigger. I'm here with Candy Czar, the rock star. I just did her workout and I'm glad to say I survived it. <laughs> And not only did she run the workout, she planned this whole event. So Candy, what was your motivation or inspiration to, to do this fundraiser? Um, so my motivation and inspiration to do this fundraiser um, was just a little message that I saw on Instagram um, showing a picture about um, a sick child who needed um, just a basket full of goodies to make him happy in the hospital. Um, and one text saying, can anyone donate to this? Can anyone wrap the basket? Can anyone take it to visit? And I just saw such beauty in the connection through all these helping hands and so much kindness. We raised about uh, definitely over $10,000. Hopefully, I'm thinking after today, 12, I could say 12,000. Um, that's how much we raised so far. I worked it out, I busted a sweat, I was on a bike, and technically all I have left to do is sip. But before I do that, I just want you guys to know that the organization has raised over $10,000 with this one event. Now if you wanna get involved and participate, all you have to do is visit the website on your screen. 
Now for PATV, I'm Carly Laval, and I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll see you later. Bye. So YAI is a great organization that offers supportive services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And that organization actually comes here and partners with PATV getting to learn about TV production. And recently they went out and interviewed the founder of John's Crazy Socks. Let's take a look. I'm John Quinn, and this is my partner, Mark. We are John's Crazy Socks. And what's our mission? It's pretty happy. It's pretty good. the fall of 2016, and I was starting some online businesses. And, and I was uh, into an MS, a last year of school, system. And he was trying to figure out, I did. what am I going to do when I'm done with school? Um, and we looked at a couple of options. Right. And what did you tell me? I said I, I said I was going to do a bit with my with my father. I said I want to sell socks. I want crazy socks my entire life. I love wearing my socks. This is my idea. I cover my name and I like it. Uh, I like it. It's fun. I like, I like it because it's creative, colorful, and let me be me. What we want to be is the one-stop shop for all the socks you can get. Most of the socks we sell are socks designed and made by other people. We have our line of charity and awareness socks that we design and we have manufactured for us. So what was the first awareness sock? Um, first sock, uh, a Down syndrome sock. John designed the world's first Down syndrome awareness sock. Tell him why three hard 21. Three hot kind one, um, a three acre come song, and a three time one, a day a Mars, Mars time first. Right? It, it, it's a first world down syndrome day. And then we did a, no, uh, a autism. autism awareness sock. Um, and we did a Williams yeah, syndrome yeah. awareness sock. Um, what's our latest sock? A new sock, a down syndrome superhero sock. So, when you ask about product lines, we have all these socks, including these charity and awareness socks. So, giving back is one of our core pillars of our business. We donate 5%. Oh, yeah, a Better Olympics. Why Special Olympics? Because I am Better Olympics. At right? And do you like the Special Olympics? I do not. And they've helped put him in a position to run this business. Plus, all of our, chari of our awareness socks and charity socks raise money for charity partners. So to date, we've raised uh, just about $100,000 for our charity partners. We have a pretty simple mission. What's our mission, buddy? Spreading happiness. Spreading happiness. And that drives everything we do. So the Manhasset and Great Neck Memorial Day parades are very important to our community, and PATV was there filming the coverage this year. Let's take a look. These brave, selfless actions, missions are completed, battles won, and comrades' lives are saved. 
Many of the people who let Memorial Day pass by without a second thought may owe their very existence to the courageous sacrifice of a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine on foreign soil in some forgotten time. They who sacrifice themselves as well as those who are deployed now all over the world are drawn from all races, colors, creeds, yet Americans all united in their effort to push back the walls of darkness, believing that they are serving a higher purpose, the preservation of our way of life. And that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. is called urban pop and and it's it's based off of like the urban art style uh, mixed with pop art which is almost like what graffiti is it's kind of like a new form pop art Louis Zimad Lamboy or Zimad as he's known knows a lot about pop art he's been a graffiti artist since 1979 Today, he's exhibiting his latest work with some of the artists who made their mark at Five Points, the world-renowned graffiti mural on Davis Street, Queens. Five Points was, it is the world's, it was the world's largest graffiti mecca in the, the world. And people would come from all over the world to just paint on Five Points. These artistic pioneers are brought together under one roof thanks to the Gold Coast Arts Gallery. I'm trying to bridge urban-suburban, and actually somebody just moved here from Brooklyn and they walked in and they went, what is this doing here? So it was really nice to have that vibe going on in, in Great Neck, New York. And, and this show is special because you found five different artists from five different backgrounds to actually create a show that works together. These urban artists are exhibiting their artwork indoors today, but some of them had their work whitewashed at five points. And it's important for the artists that actually blood, sweat, and tear into the place, like me as Z-Mad, which is here on the Shiro. Uh, they put in a lot of work there. Uh, I think it's important that they got, they got the settlement. In 2013, 21 graffiti artists brought a lawsuit against the building's developer for the whitewashing and demolition of their work on the Five Points complex. Last year, the artists won the landmark case after a jury ruled that the graffiti art was of sufficient stature to be protected by law. Five Points, that's the man right there. Mia, come here real quick, man. Come here, man. This, 
this, you're asking me about five points. The important of it, this is the man you gotta ask right there. How are you doing? Mears Juan is a graffiti legend who co-founded and curated Five Points. There is a relationship that goes on with uh, doing a mural between real estate and artists, and as grateful as we are, we still have rights, and, and there's, uh, it's important that there's uh, some sort of communication. It's not, uh, we're not doormats, and although we do do our art for free, that doesn't mean it's worth nothing. One of the philosophies of this is a lot of people cannot afford to go to museums. And how street art, one of the original reasons it started was to bring it to the people and start writing on the, on the walls that were in uh, dilapidated neighborhoods. And they bring happiness. And this, this piece right here, the pigeon, if you know pigeon, it represents New York. Like, you know, anything urban is pigeon. And the spray can had represent the street and graffiti artists. So basically, this whole piece, I'm, I'm trying to make it iconic in New York. Going to put some up legally, hopefully, legally. The Urban Pop Art Exhibit will run until September at the Gold Coast Arts Center Gallery at Middle Neck Road. Reporting for PATV Long Island, I'm Mylon Studart. So the Gold Coast Art Center is a really great place. If you're looking for something to do in Great Neck this summer, you can check out the, uh, that exhibit at the Gold Coast Art Center. And if you're looking for something to do in the evening, Great Neck Plaza has its summer concert series every Tuesday night, and it's free. Check it out. So on the last few episodes of LIE, you've seen the Air Power Museum in Did You Know with Carly Novelle. So and much fun. Yeah, it's awesome. And today you will see part three. Check it out. This is our C-47. It is huge. Yes, and this airplane has uh, been used extensively by the United States government as well as uh, uh, air forces in other countries like Great Britain, Belgium, France, and Israel. What did it carry? Did it carry anyone, just people? Did it carry missiles? This is really a cargo airplane. Mm -hmm. It was uh, made uh, identical to the uh, uh, Douglas DC-3, mm -hmm. which was a passenger aircraft. Mm -hmm. but, but this is really designed for paratroopers. Okay. So instead of having seats that face forward, right. you'll see when we go on the inside, seats face sideways. Also, there are two doors on this airplane. Okay. One door is open now, right. but if the other oh. one were open, you can actually set up a uh, some ramps and drive a Jeep in there. A Jeep is gonna fit in here? Yes. Okay. Would you like to go inside this airplane? I totally would. <laughs> okay, let's go. This is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So this, this, this airplane is, you can see from the seats on the side, mm -hmm. you sit sideways, but this is the cable where the paratroopers hook up their static line. And, um, and of course, they sit facing sideways. I'm gonna sit next to you, let's see. And these were their seat belts? Yes. And of course, they would have, uh, right now we're on a slant because mm -hmm. this airplane has a uh, conventional gear. It has a tailwinds tail wheel mm -hmm. so the plane kind of sits on an angle when it's on the ground of course when you're flying it's it's all horizontal and uh, as opposed to modern day planes that have a nose wheel uh -huh. so when you walk in the floor is flat <laughs> you're not walking up a hill 
with the seats folded away, there is another door when that door is fully open. And here I have a picture I'll show you. You can actually put up uh, two ramps and uh, you can drive a Jeep in this airplane. A it, Jeep in here? Yes, it holds two Jeeps. Two for, Jeeps. You, you drive them all the way up to the front end. And, uh, and that, that's where it works. You can even bring in a piece of military artillery, a gun, a howitzer. Well, I want to see more. What okay. else do we have? We'll go outside. This airplane is one of the last airplanes made by Republic, Fairchild Republic in the 1970s. And in fact, this airplane is still being used by the Air Force today. Really? It's called the A-110. Originally, they designated as being the Thunderbird II mm -hmm. after the famous Thunderbolt plane that they had in the Second World War. But this is the centerpiece of the airplane is this gun. Seven barrels fires a 30 millimeter shell and it fires at the rate of about 1400 rounds a minute. And how are the pilots protected? Oh, the pilot actually, he's well protected from ground fire because his entire cockpit is surrounded by titanium tub. Can I get this plane? Not really. Okay, we'll look for something else. <laughs> you, oh. you can't buy this one. Okay, what can we get? What about your favorite plane? Shall we go look at it? Yes. It's the F-105 Thunder Chief. <laughs> so this is your favorite plane? Yes, it is. Okay. And this 105 uh, Thunder Chief, made uh -huh. by Republic, has a Bombay, which I have my hand on here. Mm -hmm. And the Bombay was designed to actually carry an atomic weapon. This airplane, which flies at Mach 2.2, was actually designed to defend NATO countries from attack wow. by Iron Curtain countries. What else would you like to look at? How about the exhibits inside? Okay, we'll go inside and look at some other things. Okay. If you think this is all that we covered today, tune back in to the next episode of Did You Know for the finale of the American Air Power Museum visit. If you have any comments, cool facts, or suggestions for our next Did You Know segment, send us a note at info at patv.org. Good afternoon and welcome. Today is our ribbon cutting ceremony for our new RFID system. I'd like to welcome the Board of Trustees President, Robert Schaufeld. We will now have our first checkout. Thank you. Bob only checked out one book at a time, but you can check out multiple books. Because they work on radio frequency, the books just need to be stacked, and all of the tags will be read at once. So here's a three book checkout.
same way to return the books. Yeah. To re return your book, you pr start to begin. If you see a green light, you put your book on the platform. It shows that it's returned and you can print your receipt. As part of the system, we have electronic gates, just like you would see in a department store. If your book is not checked out, the alarm will sound. If the book is checked out, the door will open and you can leave. Wow. What a great show for the beginning of June. That was a great show. We had the Air Power Museum. Always great to see that amazing place. Yeah, plus we learned all about a fundraiser for a brand new pro nonprofit called the Foundation of Kindness. And how about John's Crazy Socks? I think I want a pair of I'm those. I'm definitely getting a pair of those, for sure. On top of a really great show, we also have a really exciting an announcement to make. Yep, PATV just won two National Hometown Media Awards. It's true. For the third year in a row, we won overall excellence for public access station in the entire country. It's amazing. It's amazing. And one act play, The White Chalet, directed by Norman Hall, also won. It's really special for us because it's the last playwrights production that Norman Hall directed. Yep. We're really honored to win both of those awards, so thank you to the Alliance for Community Media. And I can't think of any better way to end such a good show than with Grace Grella for the Vibe of the Month. Here you go, Grace. Oh, look at this incoming. Rebecca, Mike, thank you so much. Just when you need a plain bearing good news. Don't we all? I'm really happy that uh, I'm receiving this good news for the June Vibes because we need them, not only in the month of June, but every month. But this month of June particularly, we're gonna send out really great vibrations so that it goes all the way around the world and um, everybody's feeling it. So that there's a lot of love and good energy. I think it was kicked off by the royal wedding. That's, you know, a nice sign of love. And uh, we'll, we'd like to continue that around the world. So everybody out there, please know that, yeah, there are definitely, astrologically speaking, some tense energies going on. So it's how we choose to utilize these energies that's going to make them positive or negative. We have that choice, free will choice. So choose happiness, choose not to allow anybody to get under your skin. You like that song, you got me under your skin. Um, we're going we're gonna to make it a happy month. June is always graduations and happiness and weddings and celebrations. Let's keep that party going. From everybody here at PATV, we know that we want to see you in the positive zone. And if you need to come to our studios and film anything, you know, this is very easy to do. All you have to do is email us at info at patv.org for details, and you can use the studio to create something happy for yourself. Come on, get happy. We'd love to have you here, take a workshop, do what you need to do, get into the positive zone, because that's what we're all about here at PATV. So for the month of June, we're going to embrace this grace and listen to that music and say, you know what? It's time to get happy. Until the next time, stay in the positive zone.